good morning. Uh, welcome to the webinar entitled New Water and Oil Repellent Sustainable Coatings. Uh, so uh, this webinar will be presented by Rocío Pena from IMEN. Uh, she is working on the Safe and Sustainable by Design Group on IMEN um, by myself, uh, Raquel Rodriguez from Technalia working on polymer synthesis. Okay, first of all, I want to tell you some technical details. A question can be done during the meeting and at the end of the meeting in the chat. A, the question and answer section will be done after the webinar. And also you have here a, my contact email address a, if you have to, if you want to have to make any question after the webinar. Okay, so the topic of this webinar is going to be uh, how Tornado Project uh, is going to deal with the development of water and oil repellent coatings uh, uh, with, uh, without the use of PFAS. Uh, for that, uh, well, uh, Tornado Project is a new funded project and is in line with the European Green Deal uh, in which we have, in which re, uh, Europe wants to uh, reach a climate neutral in 2050. And the main point is that the transition to a climate neutrality will bring significant opportunities that have potential for economic growth, for new business models and markets, for new jobs and technological development. Uh, inside the Green Deal, there are different strategies and the one that is more related with Tornado project is the EU chemicals strategy for sustainability because uh, Europe knows that chemicals are essential to modern life and standard and economy, but uh, we also know and Europe knows that chemical substances can be harmful to people and, for, and the environment. So uh, this strategy uh, wants to have a better for, protect for human health, uh, strengthen the industry competitiveness, and support a toxic-free environment. So uh, this strategy, as I said, is part of the Green Deal and is a zero pollution ambition. Okay, so uh, one of the toxic substances that uh, has to be uh, substituted are PIPAs. Uh, these uh, are defined as fluorinated substances that contain at least one fully fluorinated methyl or methylene carbon atom. PIPAs are a group of thousands of different highly fluorinated synthetic uh, substances produced since 1940. And we can find these products in consumer products and also in industrial applications. Uh, this Material, these substances can be divided in non-polymeric and polymeric ones, as you can see in the right side of the slide. And also uh, another uh, identification of the PFAS uh, or division of the PFAS is by the length of the, of the change. So they can divide it as short chain PFAS and long chain PFAS, depending on the change length will be uh, the toxicity or the health impact will be different, as we will see later on. So uh, PFAS uh, can release during the production of the uh, non-polymeric and polymeric PFAS during the use in the manufacturing processes of the consumer products, uh, the industrial applications, in the product use, for the humans and in the waste treatment. Depending on the, if we are talking about PFAS production, using manufacturing or waste treatment, the emission will be to the air, to the soil and to the water. And the exposure of these PFAS will be to workers and biota. But in case of product use, uh, we also, uh, the consumers will be also uh, exposure to these PFAS release. Okay, these uh, PFAS 
can be found in different industrial sectors. And uh, as I said before, we make a division between the non-polymeric PFAS and the polymeric ones. In case of non-polymeric PFAS, uh, we can find PFAS in aviation, aerospace and defense as additive in aviation hydrolytic fluid, biocides as active ingredients in plant growth regulations or in unveins enhancing in pesticide formulations, construction products, additive in paints and coatings, electronics in case of flame retardants, firefighting, film formers in AFFF, household products, wetting agents in floor polishes, wetting agents on surface tank in products such as floor polishes and film agents, metal plating, wetting agents, oil and mining production, surfactants in oil, well simulations, polymerization uh, processes in emulsion polymerization, uh, when polymers have a fluorinated change. And also, uh, in case of uh, polymer PFAS, uh, we have also some sectors like automotive, uh, in which uh, can be found in raw materials for components, such as low pressure bearings and seals, in lubricants, in aviation, aerospace and defense, also uh, insulators, in cable and wiring, in coatings for wiring, flame and soil resistant, in construction, coated for uh, of architectural materials, additive in paints, electronics, insulators, solder seals, energy, pins to cover solar collector due to the wearability, again in firefighting, raw materials for firefighting equipment, including protective clothing, food processing, fabrication of materials, in household products, non-stick coatings, in metal articles, uh, supplier parts of cardiovascular graphs, raw materials from implants in the human body, stain and water repellents for surgical drapes and rooms, paper and packaging, or and grease repellents, semiconductors, raw materials for equipment, working fluid in mechanical vacuum pumps, in textile, leather, and apparel, raw materials for high porous fabrics, and in oil and water repellent and stain release. Well, this is a summary of some sector, industrial sectors, in which we can found this PFAT, but for sure, there will be more than these ones. Okay, also another uh, important aspect that uh, legislation is taking into account uh, is that uh, this PFAS uh, has a, an impact on health. Uh, it's known that there are some toxicological has when uh, we are talking about long chain PFAS in carcinogenity, circular uh, cardiovascular toxicity, endochrome toxicity, immunotoxicity, reproductive toxicity, and now uh, they are also appearing some toxicological hazards when uh, we are talking about short chain PFAS. Uh, developmental toxicity, endocrine toxicity, hematotoxicity, hepatotoxicity, neurodevelopmental toxicity, ocular toxicity, reproductivity, and developmental toxicity. So, uh, the, well, what is known is that uh, the long chain uh, PFAS uh, are more difficult to degrade because they are long chains, and in, uh, from longer time it's known that they are uh, toxic and they have, as I said, a quite a uh, amount of uh, health impact on humans. And uh, during the last years, uh, it's found that also uh, short-term PFAS uh, have impact on, uh, uh, on human health. Okay, so as I said, uh, taking into account this uh, consideration in terms of human health, uh, the persistent organic pollutant regulation in uh, 209 uh, declare, uh, include the perfluoroctane sulfonic acid in the Heistokon Convention, 
in the uh, 2019 the fluoroctanionic acid itself and uh, the fluoroctanionic acid related compounds were also included in the Exocon convention. And in 20, uh, 2022, uh, sulfonic acid and salts uh, were included in the Estocolm Convention. So, as we see, a long time, more and more uh, substances that we say at the beginning that we have a, a, a more or less 100 substances uh, related to PFAS are uh, included in the, in the regulations. Also, in case of uh, REIT, uh, uh, under the entry of 68 of Annex, uh, well, uh, uh, REIT is also taking into account that uh, this material, these substances, uh, have to be controlled. And uh, uh, the European Chemicals Agency is also uh, taking uh, care of these uh, systems. And in this year, in 2023, uh, there was a proposal submitted uh, and published by the European Chemical Agency. Uh, they've been, during six months, uh, having public consultation to share opinions. Next year, uh, the European Chemical Agency Committee uh, we have 12 months to give the opinion, uh, the, all the information and document that they have uh, collected uh, will be uh, analyzed by the Committee for Risk Assessment and the Committee for Social Economic Analysis. Uh, in, two, in 2025, the European Commission will vote a decision, and in 2026 or 2000. 27 is expected to have a restriction uh, in sense of PFAS. So, a uh, tornado project uh, is, uh, well, the title of the project is New Roots of Safe and Sustainable by Design Water and Oil Repellent by the Waste Coatings and aims to contribute to the safe circularity and to develop and uh, to design a uh, use uh, uh, and uh, control the end use of the developed materials that, as I said, will be uh, uh, performed without the use of PFAS, giving them the water and oil repellency properties. Okay, so the main objective, as I said, is to develop a new biobase organic and habit coatings with water and oil repellents, following the safe and sustainable by design criteria along all the value chains. And these uh, new coatings will be validated in industrial relevant environment to obtain uh, a performance as least identical to the PFAS coatings is there in terms of, as I said, water and oil repellency, and uh, will be tested in, th uh, in three different uh, industrial sectors, textile, packaging, and kitchenware. The three of this sector are very close uh, to consumers. So with these coatings, uh, the idea also is to accelerate the transition towards a circular economy and climate neutral society, prevent harm to human health and the environment through the life cycle, enhance the competitiveness of the European chemical industry and its value chains. As I said, uh, that is, these are the, also the main points uh, included in the U.S. strategy uh, for the chemical sustainability. Okay, uh, Tornado Consortium. Uh, in Tornado Consortium, we are involved uh, for RTO, IMEN, IBL, NTT, and Technalia, uh, 3SME, Artival, Chobi, and Dengue, Chimai, and seven large enterprises. Alpron, Arkema France, Arkema Italy, El Sur, Ignotec, Rina, and Santextil. Uh, this is going to be a 36 month project uh, starting, well, it starts uh, on January of this year, 2023, 
and will finish in December of 2025. Okay, as I said, uh, we have uh, defined three different uh, industrial sectors to, uh, to validate the coatings that will be developed in Tornado. And uh, well, uh, now uh, I will explain uh, which are the problems related with PFAS on each of the sectors and how Tornado project will contribute to them. Uh, in case of PFAS use in food packaging, uh, we are focusing on paper and paperboard food packaging. And in this sector, uh, PFAS can be found in fast food workers, microwave popcorn bag, take out paperboard containers, and for example, also in pet food bags. Uh, for a long time, uh, PFAS, long chain PFAS, have been used in fiber packaging. And uh, this PFAS would provide to the packaging is a barrier against oil and moisture. Uh, also, we have to take into account that uh, this uh, packaging, uh, the exposure, of, uh, the release of PFAS from this packaging will be migration into food uh, when this packaging is composed, landfill, recycled, or uh, after the incineration. Uh, so, uh, as we know, paper is a desirable material for packaging uh, sector, uh, printing and labeling industry, and it has an advantage. Uh, it has an advantages as low cost, lightweight, with mechanical properties, biodegradability, renewability, but it has some disadvantages that are poor water and oil resistance. So. Uh, one alternative to improve these paper properties is to coat it with a coating that has these properties. And uh, this is what is going to be done, uh, well, or what is expected from Tornado, that the coating that will be developed will be applied to the packaging structures and uh, will produce more environmentally friendly packaging products. In case of the Textile sector, uh, well, uh, textile sector is uh, quite uh, huge in the Euro in Europe economy because uh, uh, it, it controls 30% uh, of the global market of the textile sector, and there are around 1.5 million persons working in textile in textile sector, and it gives to the European Union a turnover of around. 150 million. And uh, we have to say that almost half of the PFAS consumption is also related uh, to this sector. Uh, well, again, the PFAS uh, can be incorporated uh, in the textiles uh, as a coating uh, in text technical textile, home products, sport wares, Healthcare industry, work clothing, outdoor clothing, firefighting suites, winter sports, and as we've been talking, uh, these PFAS are going to release. In this case, during uh, industrial wastewater, there is a huge release of PFAS. Uh, this PFAS is going to also be released in the air and in the solid waste products after the end of life of these textiles. Uh, in case of textile sector, uh, there are uh, some certification that the textile has to, to pass to be able to, to be sold. And uh, in these uh, certifications, uh, at this moment, they are uh, taking into account the presence of, of PFAS. For example, in EOTS, uh, that is the Global Organic Textile Certificate, uh, the substance that uh, all PFAS compounds uh, are uh, forbi uh, forbidden. So this is a very restrictive certification. In case of blue sign, uh, this, uh, this certification says that uh, PFAS 
uh, in some cases, there are some uh, exceptions in which uh, they can uh, be used. Uh, there are some limitations of uh, 50 milligrams per kilogram and uh, other type of uh, PFAS, uh, some of the PFAS are completed uh, usage ban. Okay. Uh, finally, there is another certification, uh, the CDHC, in which uh, also PFAS uh, are, are, are forbidden. So, in this uh, sense, uh, we can see that uh, the textile industry uh, has, uh, from this uh, at these uh, days, uh, in mind that uh, which kind of PFAS uh, can be used, which can not be used, and if the use, uh, the one use, uh, have some limitations. So, uh, Tornado uh, is expected to contribute to the textile sector, understanding uh, how a, a new a novel silicon chemistry uh, can uh, e provide uh, water and oil repellency without uh, the use of PFAS. Uh, Tornado will help to create more compatible textile formulation compared to PFAS. Tornado is expected to contribute less energy consumption to the decreasing of the binder as a coating, and also con Tornado will contribute more affordable solution for water and oil repellency. And the last sector uh, that is involved in Tornado project is the cookware sector. In this case, in cookware sector, uh, what uh, is used is the fluorine polymers. Uh, fluorine polymers are ideal for making food contact materials due to their initial and long life, uh, but uh, they are extremely in chemical inertness and uh, they can be harmful to the, the production of the of the cookware uh, of the cookware products. So there will be a problem also during the production and at the end of life of these of these products, of these coated articles. So uh, Tornado will contribute to the cookware sector uh, because even if the fluoropolymers that they use at this at now are not restricted, uh, they uh, they know that they have to move to a more sustainable product because uh, also the customers are going to ask them. Uh, in case of tornado, we will use uh, natural uh, materials and this will help to have a circularity. Uh, the process that will be used will reduce the temperature required for the curing and this, and this will uh, reduce the CO2 emissions and the presence of volatile substances and uh, the main the end use of light uh, after burning also uh, that we said that was one of the key problems in case of uh, cookware uh, could be eliminated. So uh, to achieve uh, these uh, water and oil repellent coatings uh, and uh, what uh, and validate in these sectors, uh, we are going to work on different research lines. Uh, the first one is uh, we are going to develop new biomonomers that will be functionalized. Uh, these biomonomers will be used during the development of the of organic and hybrid coatings, and uh, all these uh, value chains. Uh, will be done following the safe and sustainable by design criteria. So, uh, from the beginning, all the materials, the raw materials, the processes that we are going to work with during the project, uh, we should uh, should have uh, should uh, have to be safe 
and sustainable. Uh, as I said, uh, we are going to work with uh, new biomass monomers. Uh, these biomonomers uh, will be accelerated monomers coming from vegetable oils that will be functionalized uh, with PDMS and POSS. And that way we will use these monomers for the development of the coatings in case of organic and hybrid uh, coatings for packaging and textile sector, we will focus on water-based systems. Uh, what we will turn, uh, well, in a coating, we have a different formulation pr uh, products in the coating, like a solvent, additives, uh, the binder, and in just, if needed, uh, pigments, and uh, we are going to focus, as I said, on the development of the polymeric uh, binders, uh, working on a water-based uh, polymerization process that are environmentally friendly process, and also uh, working with bio-based uh, monomers that, as uh, we said, uh, they will give us the water and oil repellency without the use of PFAS. Also, as a, one of the aims is to move to the circularity, we will also try to use the, the highest percentage that's um, possible of bio-based uh, raw materials. As I said, uh, the binder uh, will be performed by uh, uh, water-based polymerization processes. We will focus on emulsion polymerization process and emulsion polymerization process. This will be the last one, a challenge, because we are talking about hydrophobic monomers that are not so easily incorporated in this emulsion polymerization process. And uh, once that we have these binders, they will be formulated uh, as coatings uh, for, textiles, for textile and packaging sectors. Uh, we also will have, we will take into account that in case of textile, we are, we are not going to focus only in oil and water repellency. We will also focus on waterproofness. And in case of packaging sector, we will also focus on oxygen barrier, barrier and thermosegerability. Uh, in uh, for uh, the cookware sector, uh, we will develop hybrid coatings based on uh, soldier uh, methodology uh, because uh, with these coatings, uh, we will develop uh, or provide to the cookware sector non-stick properties, anti-corrosion properties, high thermal stability, and food contact compliance. And uh, once that we have, we developed this uh, new system. We will validate it, as I said, in textile uh, packaging and uh, cookware sector. And uh, all the value chains will be uh, designed, taking into account the safe and sustainable by design criteria that, uh, that uh, my colleague, uh, Rocio Pena, will uh, explain you in now in her presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Raquel. I will continue with my presentation. Uh, thank you for the overall explanation of the project. So it made more sense to to explain to you this part that is also very novel. Uh, and obviously, thank you for Ternalia to organize this webinar and all of you to be here and the interest that you have in, in these terms. So, as we, as it explained Raquel, uh, one of the main points of the Tornado project is that these coatings, the new, these new materials are uh, developed for the very beginning following the safe and sustainability, sustainable criteria in order to be uh, from this very 
uh, beginning of the investigation, development, uh, to have a basic uh, concepts that will follow, will could follow uh, during all the exploitation and development of this kind of materials uh, until they reach the market. So these are the main objectives of the, this part of the project because in this project not only we have one board package uh, all related with the um, with the safe and sustainability. Also, in other work packages, we have uh, uh, some that related as, uh, for example, the SSBD criteria or recyclability. Uh, let's start for the very beginning of the, the, the safe and sustainability by design dimension. Uh, due to um, that in this presentation, I will uh, have an overview about this new methodology, more than the um, concrete result, because we, as I said Raquel, we are in the first year of the project, so we are just starting to analyze the, the, the first results that they are obtaining in the laboratory scale. So uh, in this presentation, I will be focus more in the methodology that we are following that in the sun results of the project. I hope in the, we have a second, uh, second or third webinar with at, at the end of the project to present the results of this analysis. So, as I say, let's start with a relevant um, context of the why safe and sustainability by now is, is so important. Probably you you are familiar with these figures related to sustainability called the melomes uh, the, the um, is um, is working uh, that uh, covers uh, uh, covers of your safety but also environmental and economic and social aspects. In the same way, uh, European Union developed the Green Deal that is very focused in all the uh, society become more sustainable and the safety first for the citizens is uh, one of the main points. So taking it into account this and all this new wave uh, of green chemistry, green engineering, all these um, new concepts that are rising for the 10 from 10 years to now in all the scientific uh, uh, fields, uh, it, it rise the safe and sustainability by design concept and that by now is uh, having more and more importance in all the aspects of science. So also I want to remark that the other important point in circular economy is better related with sustainability, but it's not the same. It's more related with the end of life concept and not, not consider only landfill as a, as a, a solution, consider other alternative routes as the second reduce so it's very um, it's very related, but is not as same as sustainability. So, uh, in the past um, three, four years, I think, the European Commission, with the collaboration of the Joint Research Center, is developing a new methodology called Safe and Sustainability by Design. More than methodology, is a compilation of methodologies that try to be more accessible among more easy for scientists and uh, product developers to make this kind of uh, analysis for any product to um, before uh, uh, before getting to the market and as soon as possible so uh, this is uh, uh, probably uh, something that will be developed during the next years and would be most usual and even they would probably consider as a, a recommendation for all the products in the, in, in the new products in the market. But by now, uh, this, uh, we are validating these methodologies in, uh, in, in research projects as Tornado because they want to know what are the 
key points and the, the, the disadvantages and the difficulties to carry out uh, this kind of methodology. The, this methodology follows the hierarchy pyramid of first safe, then environmental sustainable sustainability, excuse me, uh, obviously social and economic sustainability because if, if a product or a new material is no economic viable, it's not possible to reach the market. So we don't can forget it. And this, this methodology is based in three, in three dimensions in five point, steps. The first three ones is, uh, are related with safety dimension. The fourth one is related with the environmental dimension. And the fifth is in the social and economic. So uh, the, the, the safety dimension, the safety design concept is to be applied all over the value chain. Here uh, you see um, a simplified value chain of the tornado project. Uh, step one. It could be applied all over the value chains because we have to consider all the materials, raw materials, uh, the products that are uh, in every step of the of, of the life cycle is um, is considered. Step two, two is more focused in the production and processing. In this case, the coating production and the product manufacturers with the coatings. And the step three is more basic in the use phase, but also in the uh, end of life, due to it have to be considered all the uh, health and environmental aspects that could be related uh, to the use phase. So step one is more focused on the uh, in avoid or even minimize the harmful substances, harmful for human health, environment, and also that would be possible a physical harf, uh, harmful. Here in the um, in tornado, we have the example of the PFAs that uh, PFAs that are try to avoid it. Step two is focus in the hazard, but also in the exposure of the risk exposure that is could be more related to workers that are in, in the production of the, these materials. And this is important also the risk management due to that is possible to, uh, for example, substitute uh, the hazard or isolate it or use a personal protective equipment. So it's more related to the, of this. And in the case of the step three, it's very related to the product, uh, to the product, and very specific of the legislation and regulation uh, of the product. In this case, we have the, 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 the styles that is very important to to take into account the skin contact and that with the new material, but also the textile strategy. For example, this strategy considers that um, microplastics are an issue by now and have to, it is mandatory to uh, uh, control the, um, the release of the microplastics to the environment, not only in the end of life, also during the use phase, for example, in a washing machine. If for the food con, uh, for the kitchenware and um, for the packaging, it's important to take into consideration all the legislation related with the food content. But also, uh, it is a specific uh, legislation about the packaging to minimize the, 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 the production uh, and the uh, control the, uh, the recycle of these materials. In, the, in this project, uh, all the safety, the safe design uh, analysis is in charge of IFL, that is part of the park initiative from the European Commission that will be established some tools and, and develop a new, new, new new methodologies in order to facilitate uh, end users and researchers uh, the, the analysis of uh, safe uh, issues. Excuse me. 
of the sustainability by design work. We are uh, working in, in collaboration with IMEN and, Re and RINA. We co will consider also, uh, in environmental and social economic dimensions following the life cycle uh, thinking. This is this life cycle thinking is very related with eco design. That is a, a, a methodology that has been used for a long time in Europe and is very useful to identify for the very beginning of the, you have a, the material, a proto concept, uh, what are the main hot spots, uh, the, the limitations, and what are the, 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 the key points to. Um, um, optimized during all the development of the project in taking into account not only environmental but also social and economic vision. All these, uh, um, uh, all these um, analysis have a correct methodology. Here is a, a, a summary but I will explain one by one. All the LCA methodology the life cycle assessment methodology is based in this field. That is, first, the, to, to develop, to, to establish the goal the scope of the, the, the study. Uh, for example, uh, we have to take into consideration the value chains, the blocks diagram, but also the fusion and unit. That is, all the results will be referred to it, for example, in this in this project could be one kilogram of coating, but also one component with the new contents or even one square meter of the contents. Also, we have to take into consideration the scope we are analyzing. If we consider just the raw materials extraction to the production step, it could be a credit to gate. If we, if we also consider the use and disposal, uh, we, call, we call it credit to grave. Uh, for the environmental analysis, uh, it's very useful the ISO 1440, 14, 14, 40, sorry. Um, uh, in this kind of projects, we try to compa compare the, the, the usual uh, product, for example, the, in this case, could be a jacket with a, a, a PFAS um, coating and without it, uh, with the new uh, tornado coating. Uh, the result would be, could be expressed by uh, individual environment, uh, individual impact categories, as could be the carbon footprint or the water footprint, but also could be uh, defined as a, as a global result. This is called endpoint result. For the life cycle cost, it's very useful to, to follow the setback uh, methodology that also could, could consider the environmental externalities. As the, in the same in the LCA, we could consider the, the, the comparison with the current product uh, to the new one, the current coating with the new one developing in, in the project. In this case, we consider um, from operational costs, maintenance, energy, water, also uh, investment costs, as in the cost of the new equipment, and others as uh, revenues incomes. For the OCL LCA, we, the most used methodology is the UNEP, um, the UNEP methodology. The, it evaluate, this methodology evaluates potential positive, negative, and even neutral impacts. And some examples could be labor conditions or gender dimension, and it's evaluated along the, all the value chains or the life cycle of the product. Here in this figure, you have some examples. For example, in Tornado project could be important, uh, something like child labor, but consider that, for example, we, we our one of the, our raw materials is uh, soja or uh, soja oil or some vegetable oil that is mainly produced in, in low-income countries, where the child labor is in agriculture is important. So we have to take in consideration this. Uh, another um, 
Another uh, aspect could be important is how it contributes the to economic development of a local economic community or uh, the safe uh, and health of the end users. So we have to take consideration in the social LCA how is the impact of these uh, these uh, uh, new coatings in this kind of aspects. So. The second, as you say, see the second important thing in this life cycle assessment is the inventory. Uh, inventory is, is uh, life cycle inventory is just uh, get as much data as possible of the system you are analyzing. So it is important for us to get inform, uh, data from the new products and applications that we are considering in the project, define a, a value chain, a, a good description of the technologies, the equipment, the raw materials we are using. That is quite difficult if we, by now we are working a lab scale in this project, so it's quite difficult to have information. Uh, that of the la, to, in lab scale and uh, scale up it to consider a, a real um, uh, production uh, a production equipment. So we have to take into consideration this. Also, we have these two value chains from uh, bio-based materials that means that our raw materials come to from agriculture. We have the biofuels production, the, the materials production, but also we have another step that is the product manufacturing. And we have very different uses. One is for uh, textiles, and other one is for uh, kitchenware and packaging, food packaging. That it, it means two very different, even three different value chains. So by now we are working in, in the data collection of the the project from the with the help of the other projects in the in other partners in the project uh, from materials, energy, even labor. It's important to know how much hours uh, means of labor means uh, to 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 produce it. And yes, as, as a joke, uh, for us it's in very important data, and we have to um, ask for data and search for data in different in different sources, uh, papers, uh, databases, lab. Uh, and so, another important key point in this project is to the part of recyclability by design, because. This kind of methodology can help us to minimize the loss of materials, the the the, the, the preserve the economic value, and allow we more recycle cycles. It's very new. It's now uh, starting to be applied to some plastic products, uh, but it's interesting to 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 start um, doing this this in this uh, kind of research project. So in this project, we have to two main objectives, uh, to see how recipe tornado coatings, how recipe the tornado coatings, which uh, develop a new um, process to allow at the end of life of the textiles or even that is more important in the, for example, the food packaging to recover the material from the, the coatings and also how it influence the tornado coating in the product recycling because if it is not possible to recover uh, how, it, it, for example, if we want to compose a, a, a textile or, or a packaging, uh, how it in, interferes the new coating in this kind of um, in, in all life scenarios. So for doing this, uh, we make a three steps methodology to uh, review the legislation related to the product, but also with the, with the raw materials. The, because uh, it is important for us to see the limitations of for the recovered products. Also, taking into account this, we develop the scenarios in the end of life, and with all this information, we could have a new specification for the recycling by design. 
So we expect it, we have a lot of work, as you see here, we expect it to have uh, also at the end of the project some very interesting guidelines that could be also useful for other um, projects or for other researchers that are working in very similar uh, materials and then could be useful also not only for these exactly tornado coatings but other chemicals could be follow up. So as, as a summary, we, 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 we want to remark that the, the safe and sustainability by design would be very useful in a project like Tornado to ensure from the very beginning of the development of these new products and these new materials that safe and sustainability is a, a criteria is following. So we have to identify what are the hot spots, not only during production or processing, but also during the uh, use and the end of life uh, to uh, avoid or minimize the use and the release to the environment of harmful substances. So thank you all of you. And also I will thank all the partners involved in the project. Uh, I think, Raquel, that is time now for um, questions. <laughs> Thank you, Rocio. Yes, now is time for questions. As Rocio said also, uh, I would like to thank to everybody that has connected to the webinar. And now feel free if you have any question now, or if you prefer it to make us uh, questions later after the webinar. Uh, so you can start uh, asking or if not as i said you can make them later yes you can unmute yourself or write it on the chat Uh, I tried to unmute you, Valeria. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ah, okay. Yes. Uh, so I have a question because Raquel talked about three certifications that ban PFAs in textile, GOTS, Blue Sign, and CDHC. And I wanted to know if this is the only way to be sure that your clothes doesn't have PFAs in them. Uh, I don't know. I really don't know if these are the, the only certifications that uh, have to be applied or if there are more certifications. Well, I'm not an expert uh, on that subject. Sorry. But I can ask and if you send me an email, uh, I can ask and, and answer your question. Okay, thanks. Okay, so if there are no questions, uh, we can stop now the webinar. Uh, uh, Raquel, here we have yes. a question. Ah, okay, uh, sorry. We will can... share the presentation later. Uh, yes, we will share it. And also the video of the webinar. Also, we have aquí another question. It's for me. Yes, what, I time see, of, I see. <laughs> what time of tools you use for the stairs four and five? Uh, okay, these methodologies, uh, um, uh, the guidelines from the European Commission is open to to the to use different tools. It, it's very use, uh, useful to uh, use uh, software as uh, Sima Pro and Gabi. Yeah, and also databases, for example, for environmental uh, LCA is useful to use EcoInvent 
um, for the social uh, the p cycle is um, uh, are very useful uh, this kind of uh, tools but also uh, we have uh, open lca or um, uh, different kind of uh, 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 um, a different kind of software that could be applied uh, and recommended. Okay, I see here is another question. What about the mechanical properties and thermal resistance of the new bio-based coatings as compared to PFAS? Uh, at this point, uh, we have no answer. Because as we said, uh, we are at the beginning of the of the project, so we we have not uh, been able to uh, test these properties on the on the development that we've done. Also, here is a question I, I don't understand. Manufacturers are the final. <coughs> Um, and it, you refer the end users of the of the this um, in this project. We have uh, racket, uh, We have Denge for the test tiles. Mm -hmm. We also have for the packaging Chobi and for the kitchen work. No yes. Uh, uh, for the textile sector, uh, we have Dengue, uh, that is related with the coding formulation, uh, some textile, that is uh, the validator. Uh, in case of packaging, we have uh, Artival as the coding formulator, uh, Ignotech and Chobi as the validators of the of the packaging, and in case of cookware, we have Alufron. Also, we have a, a question regarding more, I think, more webinars like this to share the results. Uh, Raquel, if you want, as a coordinator, what are the expected dissemination of the project? Uh, well, uh, yeah, we will try to make more webinars uh, to share uh, what we are doing in the in the project, and uh, we will well also uh, this uh, this results uh, would be could be patent would could be uh, publishing scientific articles. Uh, we will see along the project uh, how we we disseminate our, all our uh, results and conclusions. Here's another one for you, Raquel. For what I see, we are the beginning of development of solutions for the industry using PFAS free products. Is there any company that is a reference in the advance made in this field? More specific, I am referring to the world of industry man industrial maintenance. I cannot assure that in no company uh, has any product that uh, has no PFAS and has a uh, uh, the same properties as the as the previous uh, coding. We are not in contact with any company. Okay, so if there are no more questions, uh, as we said, uh, feel free to ask Rocio or or myself uh, any question after the the webinar. And thank you very much for for being there.